what's up guys it's mma analyst here to give you my predictions for ufc on fox 3 diaz versus miller all right so uh, before we get down to it first things first i did um kind of lock in my first interview for my podcast which i believe will be posted every tuesday starting next tuesday all right so i don't know what day that is but you know, tomorrow is, uh, you know, Friday, and then the day after that. So the first Tuesday, all right, there you go. And uh, and it's going to be uh, Misha Tate. So I just got to actually get the interview. I mean, we've already agreed that, you know, it's going down. It's all good. So, um, you know, just got to get that interview actually recorded. And then also discuss, you know, I mean, what am I going to talk about during the actual podcast? It's just going to be me talking I want to set it up so that um, you can download the MP3. Um, it's going to be available at betmma.ca. It's also going to be available through here. Something like that. I'm going to figure it out. Anyways, anybody who is not American, because I haven't figured that out yet, uh, Sports Interaction, they've actually stepped their game up with uh, sports betting in general. And MMA betting as well. Uh, par- a lot of um, prop bets are available and whatnot. So what I'll do is this because the last time there was a, actually a pretty high demand. I was surprised that I, I you know I ended up going to like 15 people. So I'm gonna say the first the first 20 people to uh, to sign up. So you just gotta contact me. I'll give you the link. You know we'll go back and forth. You know what I mean. But yeah, first 20 people. Um, to actually contact me to sign up and actually do sign up, we'll get two months free picks of uh yeah of, of my betting picks. All right, so there you go. All right, let's get right down to it. Nate Diaz versus Jim Miller. Um, I said it before, I'll say it again. The Diaz brothers have been impressing me. Um, you know, Nick had his little bit of an issue in his last fight. Um, but uh, there were multiple fights where I thought both brothers were going to be in trouble. I didn't think that Nate Diaz would be able to uh, take out um, <clears throat> Donald Cerrone, and he did, and uh, he did pretty impressively. Um, we already know what Nate Diaz is all about, right? He's got um, solid jiu-jitsu. Um, his boxing is, is, is getting better, striking getting better. His issue is, yeah, it's uh, the wrestling uh, fact. Somebody who actually has solid wrestling and uh, good enough uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu defense can most likely take down Diaz, either one, and uh, kind of just put the pressure on them. And the Diaz brothers are more than obliged, or more than um, happy to oblige. And they'll fight off their back or... You know, whatever it is, and then at the end of the day, be a little bit upset because maybe they were doing a lot off their back, and the guy on the top wasn't doing enough, and pause, and all that other stuff. But in this situation, Jim Miller is not going to be that guy who just takes you down and doesn't really do much. Jim Miller, he's uh, he's got solid jujitsu, solid wrestling. Um, I don't see him having that that Melvin Gillard slip up where everything's going great, and then oops, you know. Uh, even in his fight against Melvin Gillard, he, he got caught heavy, uh, was hurting, and then uh, ended up still winning in the first round. I think Jim Miller is a very difficult situation for Nate Diaz. If Nate Diaz can beat Jim Miller, then it's time kind of just to just say, okay, well, uh, let's maybe give him a title shot or, or see what's going on. Uh, that would be his third win in a row, a solid win over Donald Cerrone. Uh, who was on like a five fight winning streak at the time? Okay, Takanori Gomi, he whooped his ass, but whatever. That doesn't you know doesn't mean a lot. But he still whooped his ass. And uh, yeah, then Jim Miller, who um, you know he's um, you know he was on his own serious winning streak, only stopped by Ben Henderson, and then now went over Melvin Gillard. So uh, if De- if Diaz can prove that he can deal with these wrestlers and more specifically Jim Miller. Uh, somebody with you know decent stand up, great jujitsu, black belt ju- uh, in jujitsu, great wrestling. Both these guys got cardio for days. Then there you go. Um, if Diaz can make this a fight, this could probably be a, you know fight of the night. Both these guys are not going to run out of energy. Both these guys high intensity 
they just keep going and going and going. Lots of scrambles if Diaz can make scrambles out of it. Um, if not, Jim Miller could just out-muscle him and outwork him. Anyway, you look at it, I don't have Jim Miller finishing off uh, Nate, D- Nate Diaz. I have Jim Miller winning by decision. Josh Koscheck versus Johnny Hendricks. Looks like two guys um, heading in opposite directions of the career. Josh Koscheck, uh, recipient of um, you know one of the nicest gifts uh, judges could ever give you, a win that is undeserving. Uh, Wow, crazy that he actually won that fight against Mike Pierce. I, I remember the fight, and if I do remember correctly, he basically didn't do anything. I was watching the fight like, why doesn't Koscheck want to win this? And I had picked Koscheck, and I was rooting for Koscheck, and the fight was over, and I'm like, man, what was that? And I was just like, man, that was terrible, 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 terrible. And then he won, and uh, I don't know how. But anyways, Koscheck uh, hasn't looked really great for a while. I mean, he did his thing against Matt Hughes. Um, but okay, come on, right? Um, against a guy like Johnny Hendricks, who, again, trying to trying to work his way up the ladder, coming off of a 12-second knockout of John Fitch, who is just extremely difficult to finish. Uh, that at least shows that he's got the, you know, he's got the power. Um, he's, a, he's a wrestler on top of that, so it's not like... Uh, Josh Koscheck is going to be able to come in here and just decide to take down Johnny Hendricks at will and just uh, get a nice little victory that way. I don't see that happening either. Josh Koscheck's striking is very rudimentary. I mean, he's improved, but at the end of the day, Josh Koscheck has um, an overhand right. That's it. That's it when it comes to his striking. And he waits and he waits and he tries to land that overhand right. And I think Hendricks, uh, you know, got a little bit tighter, crisper punches. And, uh, yeah, with the combination of Johnny Hendricks being more aggressive than Josh Koscheck, having wrestling defense and better striking, and I think he just wants this more, I'm going to go with Johnny Hendricks. Uh, who would have thought a year ago that Josh Koscheck would be um, getting picked against uh, to, to lose against Johnny Hendricks? But, yeah, I do think Johnny Hendricks will win this fight. If he doesn't knock out Josh Koscheck, not to say that he will or that there's a high possibility of it, but uh, if that doesn't happen, I have Johnny Hendricks winning uh, via decision. Um, yeah, and then I don't know what happens next. Josh Koscheck left his camp, all that other stuff. But we'll see what happens in the fight before we go worrying about what's going to have to happen after that. Husamir Polaris versus Alan Belcher. It's always the same thing with Polaris. If the other guy is not an amazing striker with amazing takedown defense, um, or at least solid wrestling um, solid jiu-jitsu defense, um, then I'm going to pick Husumar Polaris to find the fight on the ground at some point. Um, Alan Belcher, you know, he's he's solid. I mean, um, you know, well-rounded fighter. But at the end of the day, I think the fight will go to the ground at some point. Polaris, has, uh, he's just an absolute beast. He gets in there wrestling power, short, stocky, pick you up, slam you, whatever. Uh, you know, he'll run in, pull guard. He'll do whatever to get the fight to the ground. Once he gets it to the ground, that's it for you. Unless he stops fighting and looks at the referee because he thinks that you're greasing, that you can just knock him out when he's not looking. But other than that, uh, man, I mean, I pick, I'll pick Paul Harris against most people in the division. Um, you know, it is what it is. Like, maybe the top three or four guys at any given time probably Paul Harris can't beat or will have the most difficulty against. But most people, if you're fighting Polaris, and if, and if I think this fight's going to get to the ground, then I think you're going to be visiting a uh, physiotherapist uh, shortly after the bout. And that's what I have. Polaris uh, winning this fight in the first round. Really, it's the thing with Polaris, it's kind of like, if he doesn't win this fight maybe by wrestling, which, you know, something that he really doesn't do a lot, then he's going to win by submission. And if he's going to beat you by submission, then he's going to beat you by submission early in the fight, right? It's not like he's going to wait until the third round to, to, to submit you or wait until the second round to submit you. It can happen. It has happened. But um, I think, uh, you know, he's going to go out there, do what he does, and get it done. Polaris by uh, Achilles, I mean, uh, by heel hook. Belcher, man, be ready for that, man. Have the stretcher on the side, waiting. 
Hopefully nobody gets too injured in this fight. Uh, Pat Berry versus LeVar Johnson. Um, LeVar Johnson's going to have a massive reach advantage. Um, solid um, jab. That's the biggest thing that I noticed uh, in his fight against Joey Beltran. He was really, really confident in his jab. Um, the way for Pat Berry to win this fight is um, you know, keep his hands up, head movement, leg kicks, keep moving around, and try and counter with uh, a, an overhand over top of a jab, kind of get in there over the top, try and uh, knock out LeVar Johnson. Um, that or Pat Berry go for a double leg and maybe try and submit him. That's not going to happen though. I have uh, LeVar Johnson being able to not get knocked out and um, finish the fight before his legs turn to rubber and he rolls over onto the ground screaming in little baby pain. Um, yeah, Pat Berry, his uh, strike, his athleticism is great. Like He's very athletic for heavyweight, but uh, his striking is vastly, vastly overrated. Um, it's just as simple as that. Um, they I always talk about his world class um, striking, and it's just not as a kickboxer world class. He has done kickboxing. He did compete, and he did okay. But um, no, he will not. Um, he is not world class as a kickboxer, as a heavyweight kickboxer. And um, I think that is part of the reason why LeVar Johnson will be able to avoid getting tooled on the feet. If he does get hit, he could go lights out. Same thing for Pat Berry, but I think it's most likely going to happen with Pat Berry. Uh, catching jabs, 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 little cross, whatever it is. Uppercut, eventually unconscious. Uh, LeVar Johnson, I'm going to go with a uh, first or second round knockout. All right, on the undercard, I've got Tony Ferguson, um, TKO over Michael Johnson. John Dodson, TKO first round over Tim Elliott. John Hathaway, decision over Pascal Krause. Um, John Lineker over uh, Gano. Um, Danny Castillo over John Cholish. Um, Dennis, uh, Dennis Bermudez over Paulo, uh, Pablo Garza. Nick Dennis or Nick Denny over Roland DeLorme. And I'm going to go with Carlos Vermola over Mike Masenzio. So there you go. Those are my picks for UFC on Fox 3. Diaz versus Miller. Again, first 20 people to contact me will get um, two months of free betting picks from myself. All right? There you go. MMA. It's important. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, battling uh, Sharon this Friday. March 4th. Anybody in the GTA, you know, the greater Toronto area who's, you know, down to see some entertaining battles and whatnot, uh, you know, show up. Uh, check out kingofthedot.com. Get the information there. And if you do go there, you know, holler at me. Say what's up. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, I'll buy you a drink. Now, it's not going to happen. Not a chance in hell. But, you know, say what's up. MMA, it's important. Peace.